What up, guys? Welcome to the Black Bell Barber Podcast, the first and only podcast about entrepreneurship for barbers and beauty professionals. My name is Tico. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram as a Tico Invictus. I'm your host, and I have here my beautiful wife as a co-host. And this podcast is all about bringing information, education, and insights for our brothers and sisters from the beauty industry. And today's episode, we're going to have here a special guest, Marcelo Lipiak, and the topic is physiotherapy. Physiotherapist? You are physiotherapist, and that's the whole discussion about how barbers can prevent back pain and bad posture because that's the thing, man. We, we as, a, a, as a beauty professional, we stand out in our feet and our back for hours, even like 12 hours a day. So, Marcelo Lipiak, thank you for coming, man. Uh, I'm grateful for you being here today. Can you share who you are, what you do? And let's share some information with the brothers and sisters from our industry. For sure, for sure. Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've known you for a while now, and I had an opportunity that you're my patient at some point in the past. And I'm happy to be here, Chico. You gave me some massage, right? Massage, just, yeah. just joking, guys. <laughs> manual therapy, Tico. Manual therapy. I'm postural just, re-education and all that. That's for massive. sure. <laughs> but yeah, my name is Marcelo. I came from Brazil. I'm a specialist in manual therapy. I have done a couple courses in regards different uh, techniques that we are able to use in order to improve the quality of life of, uh, of my patients. Uh, I came here in 2014, uh, and as everybody knows, the immigrant life here is not easy. M most of the time you have to support yourself, especially because in order for you to be a physical therapy in the United States, you have to get your doctorate done. So when you were a foreign student, you have to pay double the tuition. And saying that, we have to do whatever it takes to get the certification, and that's what I had to do. The hustle, the working, the sleep deprived most of the time, but being able to accomplish all those goals and being able to be here for the community, for being able to be here talking to you is just like a, a oh my God, it's, it's something that makes, makes me look back and say like, yeah, everything was worth it. So um, as I said, I'm a manual, therapy specialist, but I'm also an oncology specialist, all those titles I brought from Brazil. And since I've been here, I had the opportunity to work in a different skill settings, since from like nursing homes, hospitals, and also clinics. And currently right now I'm working uh, in a big, big hospital in Fort Lauderdale, and also a nursing home close by here. And I've seen a lot of patients uh, during the time that I've been here is the, the bottom line is nobody wants to take more medicine. Every day we can see people like trying to get away from it and uh, how the, you the get away. The best remedy is uh, prevention, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you're able to prevent an lesion and especially when they come from like the muscle, muscle skeletal group where we are able to address in the early stage postural dysfunctions that in a long run will result in a lot of pain in a lot of dysfunction this is where we are able to be more effective and since uh, we spoke about the podcast I, I was thinking about like how we can prevent because you guys stand the entire day and like the movement that you guys do and the repetition just never stops. You are like athletes. You have to take care of your body, guys. That's not something that you can, it's like your Caesars. It's even more important than your Caesars, I would say that. Because you have to keep that in shape. You have to, to be able to keep it strong, to keep it in place, because in a certain point, may, might not be even like in a short period of time, maybe in the long run, if this is your career, you're going to feel it. And that's when the, you're going to remember that, oh, shoot, I should have done my exercise, at least the warm-up before you start your day. 
because most of the time when you just you are in a hurry that's your daily life you get to the barber you have to do you have like you have so many clients you st you start forgetting about yourself so the best way for you to start the prevention part is when you are able to have your own routine like your stretches you can even do like a little warm up before your day start because you're going to have like good four, five, even sometimes six hours straight, and you have to watch your posture because as the time goes by, you don't have the same quality and the same, the same consciousness that when you start your day. So you have to be, to be careful with your posture throughout the entire day. And how you can be able to perform that? Only doing exercises, doing your stretches, and especially watching your posture. To maximize the strength of your muscles, right? Yes, exactly. So that is a couple exercises that we are able to do it, especially postural ex exercises, because you guys tend to be in uh, what we call kyphosis, right? You, you have like an internal rotation of the, the shoulder, and most of the time you tend to go like a, you do a sh uh, shoulder shrug. And when you do this shoulder shrug, you, ha you have all your muscles tension in the, in the the back of your neck and on top of your um, thoracic spine. So one good way to prevent that, making sure that you can at least leave your shoulders relaxed and try to work a little bit more with your arms in a way that you're not gonna overload the shoulder <laughs> and your trapezius muscle, that is the, the top one, where you most of the people has a lot of pain on it. So what happened to me I think it happens uh, with the majority of the, our brothers and sisters from the, uh, the, the building industry. So we, let me give you my example. I was working like 12, 15, 16 hours per day, right? A day. And I had this tremendous pain in my back, right under my, uh, my shoulder right there. Your shoulder blade. I, and, I ex and the day I mentioned to you, and right away, <laughs> You brought me back in, in the room, the tattoo room uh, at the shop, and you start like stretching me and telling me all these uh, ways that you can prevent and exercise that you can strengthen out all your muscles. So what's the type of exercise uh, barbers and beauty professionals can do to maximize this, their muscle strength? Well, uh, the muscle strength is very important, but mo I would say more than that, the stretching. At the, at the first time you have, if you don't have lengthening the muscle, you're going to end up with a different dysfunction. And dysfunction from lack of strength is one thing. But most of the time when you were like too tied up, you, you ended up having different kind of, uh, I wouldn't even say like nerve injury because you can get like a pinched nerve. You have your brachial plexus that can get like tied up and then you can even start feeling the tingling in your hands. Sometimes could be related to what we call radiculopathy, but that's most of the time is not the case. Most of the time is just tightness from the muscles. So if you're able to have the like tightening means the muscle is kind of sh shrinks, it right? It shrinks, and since your nerve is most of the time get passing through or getting like detached from one side to the other side, you can start having what we call neuropraxis. That is the outer sensation that you have in your hands. And most of the time, if you're able to properly stretch and uses the neuro glides that has to be performed by a, like a physical therapist, uh, you're gonna be able to see right away the difference. Sometimes people think that is, they have like a major problem, but most of the time, if, we, if it is well diagnosed, you are able to address the problem in like two or three treatments because it's like, pure muscle tightness. Since you, you treat me once, because I took a few sections uh -huh. with you, I have one side of my body, most of my leg, I have a more uh, elasticity of my, my muscle, but in the other side, I have very tightened yeah, exactly. muscle. So what happened? Well, it's different. That's where it comes the scoliosis. That's where we can see one side of your cord spine is more I wouldn't say contracted, but the tonus is elevated. And since the tonus is elevated, you have one side that is taking over the other one. And when you have this, you already have like a uh, not functional posture. 
And if you apply that for your job and the amount of hours that you spend like cutting the hair and doing everything you, you were supposed to be doing, you're gonna come as you came to me and say, Marcelo, I can't move. That pain is like, makes me feel miserable. So I was feeling miserable. And at this point is where like a professional can be like a, pro a physical therapy can make all the difference in a, some, someone's career. Because at this stage, if you already have the, the, this dysfunction as you had the scoliosis, and on top of that, you have all this overload from your, from your job, you're, you're gonna feel too much pain. I have so much question in my mind here. Oh my gosh, I, have so, I can. So about bad posture. Right, without uh, even letting you finish <laughs> what you were explaining, because I have a bad, bad, really bad posture, and everybody that is are watching us right now, majority of barbers has the same pain, back pain, lower pain, shoulder, and I noticed that barbers are kind of curved, like uh, how you say uh, in, in yeah, in you have like the internal rotation of the shoulders, the back is curved, hunch back, yeah. How do you say corcunda? How do you say that? Kurkunda in English. Kypho yeah, it's kyphosis. Kyphosis. So All the barbers are like this. Us are curved because of the After posture. Years. When we are cutting, we kind of bend ourselves to see the lines and blend Zico the lines on like the face. Yes. I has a huge curve in my back. I think it's, it's in my back is like an ass inside. And if you look from <laughs> front, it's an, like another ass. <laughs> so tell me something a little bit about exactly. that. Because you see the bump. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, when you have, like, as I was saying, you have this posture, you spend the entire day, like, protruding, uh, like protruding your shoulders interiorly in internally rotating because you have to work your way around the head of your client, right? So when you do all the, those moves, you, like, just at the end of the day, you're just too tired, and y your posture is, is start falling you off. Don't, you don't even see it, right? You don't even feel it, right? And at this point where it's so important that you have to take, like, a little break, let's say you have your customer, and I don't know, from, like, customer A to customer B, allow yourself to have at least five minutes of stretch. What type of stretch? We can do like you can Simple do all stretch? types. Yeah, you can do necks, especially the one that you are gonna be side bending towards your left side, towards your right side. But one most important that people usually forget is when you look forward, you turn your head forty five degrees and you put the the side that you're looking at it over your head. And behind your head, you're going to push forward. Okay. That's going to work the muscles in the back of your neck. That's where you get most of the tightness because you're doing this movement all the time. All the time. And you're mm -hmm. hunching it over. So what's the most important thing? Getting these little breaks and allows yourself to stretch. When you look at someone, you already see the bad posture already. Shoulders in, well, neck forward. Well, when you're a physical therapy, even like the gait from the every single person is like a, a a thing between among us you know you, when you see any kind of dysfunction you're already like so oh this is coming from this part of the body he, this guy should have been doing this and this but most of the time is <laughs> <laughs> you're is judging how, the posture <laughs> is how we diagnose as we see people walking i diagnose hair too yes. bad haircut good haircut <laughs> question did our posture me and tico got better after you saw us last time, like let's say three years ago, from how we are now, because we're doing Pilates. I know, I know. Did I know. you notice the improvement in our Pilates posture? I was reading about Pilates and how how good is to strengthen all your core because the core it holds up all the rest of the body, right? Yeah, exactly. Explain better. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, pil uh, Pilates is a, a very good exercise because mo uh, Pilates uh, you are able to work and have the consciousness consciousness of your own body it helps you to move helps you to stretch and depending on the type of the pilates you're gonna have like also a calisthenic exercise what does that mean that you're gonna improve your cardio condition so and not only the fact that you're doing those exercises but you're also occupying your mind because liking or not they stress can bring you a lot of side effects. 
these side effects could include muscle pain. Sometimes you don't even have that much pain, but since you are so stressed, something that is smaller start building up in something bigger. And if you are able to identify those triggers, you can address the problem and say like, okay, uh, that's time to take a little break. Not only because I want to take this break because of my posture, but because of my mind, I need to have this peace of mind and this clearness to being able to work and has the workflow in a way that you won't get stressed that much. And that little break, when you get the routine that you are so deep, deep into it, you can get that five minutes. And as soon as you get this break, you can come back with a fresh mind and hopefully with a better posture as well. What is the uh, the treatment for whoever has scoliosis and bad posture, like you very curved, like myself and many barbers, even my barbers, man, I see them like curving on top of the client and that becomes something real for life, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, that uh, is a very broad question. It's hard for me to tell because every single patient is one patient. Explain a simple way. Let's say you have like Corcunda, like what's the name of it? Yeah, you gave it? Uh, kyphosis. kyphosis. So uh, you can do like a lot of stretches opening up, right? So where you are able to externally rotate, do your arm stretch for the back. Actually, we can even do like a workshop for your barbers for... Uh, That's nice. Uh, I will stop by there. We can do like a couple, uh, a routine for them starting in the morning, like a little break and uh, lunchtime. And when you finish your day, because it's not only getting ready, but also when you finish, you have to like get yourself back because, okay, this is what I'm finishing today. I did that many hours. I need to give me this little time at the end of the day for me. And then you do your stretch, you do your exercises. And based on that, you're going to be able to improve your quality of life, most important, but also the work. Wow. The, uh, what is the process when someone looking for a professional like you, a physiotherapist? What is the process? So they call you, they go there, and what is the process? I know it depends on each client's uh, needs. Yes. But what is the process when you have someone, give me my example. Yeah, for example, you know? like right now in Florida, we have the physical therapists. We have a direct access from the patients. So if you are able to get any physical therapy that you find more comfortable with, uh, you're able to get him to get to him. He's gonna do an evaluation in you. He's gonna address. He's gonna see what dysfunctions you have, and based on that, he will be able to tell you, uh, okay, we're gonna address. You have to. We gotta have to work a little better, and we need to get some MRI, some X-rays, and he will be able to address where you have to go. If sometimes you have to go to a medical doctor, you're if your physical therapy works with a doctor, he's going to be able to refer you and you're going to be able to get like the full treatment. But most of the time, if you're able to get to any physical therapist that knows their basis, they are able to address, they are able to diagnose your posture, that's the most important part, you should be fine. The, the, I always have this question in my mind. <laughs> I called you one, uh, I, I mentioned that you're Mass massagist, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got mad. So you're not a massagist. But what about doing massage and physio? What is the difference between? Because I believe the massage is just like more to relax, it's just like in a makeup that re gives you a relief, instant in relief. But physiotherapy is not, right? not a treatment, right? Treatment. Yeah, well, uh, don't get me wrong. The massage, we do have the resources and the knowledge to use massage as a form of treatment but it really depends on what type of therapist you are so my background uh, even though I'm a massage therapist as well I use the, the resources I have that would be more Mulligan McKenzie there are more advanced techniques instead of just the pure massage because most of the time up like the patient comes to you like I'm in pain and they I, and they say like I want massage and the first thing I say like no I don't do massage mm -hmm. I do what you need to be done it if it is massage it will be performed you treat the problem right yes right so, on the its root yeah and actually like the most important part for any any therapist is to have your basis covered 
your diagnosis is very important. Because if you're not able to properly diagnose your patient, you're going to mistreat this patient for something that they are not even, they don't even have it. So being able to identify the dysfunction and coming back for what you said, like let's say my patient has like increased tonus, he's very tight, and I need to do some manipulation, that it seems that is massage, but really is male facial release and you have some movements that is more related to rubbing, to getting some cream, to detach and to break that fibrosis that the patient might have, that's what we call when you use a massage. But if the patient comes to me and say like, oh, I want a massage, they say, okay, so you have to go to a massage therapist. Mm -hmm. Why our muscles get tight like that in the point that it's all so like sore? Why this happens? Well, we Is have to consider, <laughs> yeah, actually, you have to consider that you, you have, we go to the gym to get strong, let's say like that. So if you don't have the strength to keep and maintain that position, uh, your muscles are going to start like getting overworked. And your muscles are a pure, imagine a lot of cords, and uh, at the point that you were able to maintain that posture for so long, that cords start ripping off because you're, you don't have the strength enough, the actin and the myosin that are composed inside the muscle, they start ripping off. And then when they start ripping off, this little, this micro lesion, is start, these fibers start like getting ripped and when they realign, they don't realign properly. So they overlap each other. Sometimes you can get like a, we call trigger points and those trigger points are very painful and we are able to release them with manual therapy where you do like the digit compression and you're able to kind in a rough way very shallow you're going to realign that is much more into it but if we start talking about it, we're going too deep since i'm doing pilates i have more than 150 classes already so i haven't i haven't gone white no i've been last week one day because I was so busy, but I, I wanted to get back into it this week. Uh, I always explain to people Pilates works uh, the primary muscles or the second the secondary muscles, the muscles that you just explain from inside. That's how I explain. I need you to explain. <laughs> so the difference of between <laughs> someone work out and build up this muscle that is primary one and the muscles in between that holds the whole body, the, the bones or whatever. What is the difference between yeah, what have Pilates does and work out lifting I can, weights done. I can even like break down a little further than this because you have your primary muscles from movement right so let's say elbow flexion you're going to have your biceps is the primary that is going to be there but also you have your coracobrachialis which is another muscle that is stabilizing your elbow for you to perform the elbow flexion uh, this is just like a very simple example, but in your abs, you have a lot of muscles there that in order for you to do a side bending, you need all those muscles to be engaged in order to have a good stability of your lower back and don't get hurt. So it's the same thing when you were doing the, your Pilates. It's so good because they are focusing on your breathing. What is because breathing? Can you explain? Breathing. The inhaling, exhaling. Okay. Breathing. 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 Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry about I thought that. it was a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the name of the muscle. So <laughs> at this point, when you're able to control all of that, you engage your core muscles. You make sure that your posture is well fitted for you to perform simple and basic movements that you in the daily life you don't perform like that. So this is how you start building up your core strength in order to support yourself doing your daily activities. What I love about Pilates, it's because I didn't have balance at all. At all. I was... Yeah. She used to bump and everything, <laughs> follow all the time. Yeah. All bruises. I would all fall, like, out of nowhere. I couldn't stand up. And then Pilates helped me with my balance. And I like the fact that there is no impact in your joints. Because yes. I tried doing... Um, Tico took me to... <laughs> what's CrossFit. the name? CrossFit. Oh. And you then guys love CrossFit, right? Yeah. <laughs> CrossFit is the I worst for injuries. And then we're doing CrossFit. And in two months doing CrossFit, I started feeling back pain really bad. That's when I realized that I have herniated discs. That I couldn't do CrossFit anymore. And Pilates helped me because since I started doing, I'd say about three, four months after that I was doing 
constantly like because if you just go once a week it's not enough you have to have a routine exactly. after going three four times a week constantly i never ever felt back pain because it was affecting my knee because oh. it's the lower part of my back right so it was affecting my legs i would feel numbness and a lot of pain so not anymore how many classes do you have now over 500 <laughs> Four five hundred. Oh. I'm about five hundred classes wow, now. Wow, you guys! Yeah. But uh, I mean, like as you said, uh, of course, uh, CrossFit is. W we don't want to make any enemies here, right? Mm. <laughs> but like CrossFit is like a very intense workout, and you have to be very careful when you perform those exercises. Not that it's a bad thing. You do have to do in a certain way. Your coach has to guide you, but. And as in any other sport, and especially a high intensity as CrossFit, your risks of getting some dysfunction or some back pain, or as you said, you have like your herniate the disc, and the symptomatology that you have is gonna appear much more, that's for sure. On the other hand, with Pilates, you're able to break down, you have less impact, you're able to work in a much slower pace, and you can always watch your posture. I heard that Pilates can actually help, depending on the level that you are with herniated disc, it can, what is the opposite of progress? Regress? De decrease? Like, instead of progressing and making worse, yeah. it would actually make it better? We have to think about this. Like, uh, we there is a, a couple different things when we talk about discs, right? We have herniate the disc, we have bulging disc, we have extrusion of the disc. So imagine that your disc is uh, all rings. You have like a very like small a silicone one. rings, right? Yes, very small one, and you start from the inside to out. You have all rings. So if you your external rings start like ripping off or the, even from the internal one, you're gonna have like, your disc is gonna touch your cord spine. That's where you're gonna start feeling the tingling, the numbness, and that's where the problems start. When you are at this point, you're able to use your core muscles in order to stabilize your posture, and this way you're gonna increase the space in between the vertebra, and this pressure that was there before is gonna be like much, uh, is gonna reduce a lot in a way that it, this bulging disc wouldn't be touching as much as before. However, if you have a, a, I wouldn't say like a complete extrusion of the disc, but if you have like a ruption and you have like a posterior anterior touch where you have a lot of pain in most of the patients that they do have this chronic problem, they cannot even walk because the herniated the disc is touching the cord spine. I'm a, a proof of that. I have two herniated the disc. So, and I exactly know the feeling what is, ha what is to have those things and being able to treat just losing weight, doing your exercises and making sure that when you do like, especially work related stuff, you have to watch your posture. Because especially uh, like me as a physical therapist, I also have to watch my posture because at first I have two hernia the disc and third uh, and second, mm -hmm. I wanna work for the rest of my life with my profession. And as you guys, uh, like the, the beauty industry, you need your body, you need your hands. This is how you, you, start, you start taking care, proper care of yourself in order to achieve longevity inside the profession. Yes. What about some exercise that has impact, like running, for example, if you have her near a disc? Is, is it is bad? <laughs> running has a lot of impact, right? It does I love to run, myself. It does have a lot of yeah. impact, but if, uh, if we start like cutting off all the exercises that has impact, uh, you're basically not even going to walk anymore. Might do a bicycle, mm -hmm. cycling, right? Yeah, but I mean, if you, like, if you have a good core strength, if you're working your muscles and you're able to get like everything w in place, you're able to perform your running, you're able to do all your activities that you used to do it. But of course you have to watch very carefully, you have to be able to control all this, don't overdo it and control your peace and try to be a little bit more ca cautious if you already have any diagnose or any um, Mobility dysfunction, right? Wow. What exer oh, exercise, no, what uh, type of sports 
he would not recommend for barbers and beauty professionals. That could be bad for them because they stand all day. That will make it worse. The ones that are no no for them. Ah, it's sad. Any, exer <laughs> any exercise is good. It, it, that's a very hard question mm -hmm. because er every exercise you have your own your own way of doing it, and of course that is the wrong way of doing it. That is not good or bad. It's just like you're wrong. doing it wrong or you're doing it correctly. And what about the good ones? Which ones would say are the best ones for beauty professionals to help them because they stand all day? Well, the, we can start with basically going to the gym, working your back muscles, especially the ones that it exercises that you open your arms and you're using your back muscles because you guys tend to stay the entire day with your shoulder internally rotated, doing a lot of uh, pectoralis stretch. That's going to be very helpful. And there is no like uh, strict exercise that I'm going to say, okay, guys, let's do this, this, and that. That's going to be good for you. Because it really depends on how you assess. We can do, like I said, a, a, a workshop in your barber and just get it going over a couple basic stuff where they can do before, during, and after. So talk, talking about that, you're still doing a, like a, a consultation privately. How you do? Are you going yes, to people's I house? How you, how yes, I work? do. I have my own. Uh, I, nowadays, I, I find myself in a spot that is easier for me to go to my client's house than having my own space because, uh, as I said, I work in a hospital. I have a, a couple, uh, I have like a, this year especially, it's a very complicated year for me. But hopefully in the near future, uh, we st still see if I'm going to be able to get like my own place. But for now, I'm just doing private sessions and like my client's house and I even like in a uh, doctor's office offices I'm going to have a couple partners that I will go there and I even treat their patients sometimes the own doctors I'm treating too. I need some sessions. Yeah. <laughs> that was really helpful when I did. So really helpful. Guys, <laughs> if you are watching this video we all has these pains, right? Back pains, especially barbers. And in our barbershop, we don't have the mattress on the floor because that mattress for impact. for the impact, right? And we don't have, but we do have uh, uh, the sneakers that has uh, orthopedic. It's it's from uh, I think Rebook. The, the the brand is Rebook, Re Rebook I think, and that works out pretty well. The guys like it. So if that helps, you mean the, uh, the, the little, little mattress? Heel, it, well, yeah. it does. It does help not only having the proper shoe because we have to understand that we, have, we need to have a certain height in order for your feet to be able to relax. Because if you have like, if you wearing sandals to work, that's not going to be good. You need to dis properly distribute your own body weight on your feet. Right, because especially when you guys stand the entire day on top of your feet. Mm -hmm. So not only your feet, it's your knees, it's your low back. And then it comes another point that I was gonna bring to you that some professionals that stand, including therapists, we start to have uh, vessels. Vessels, exactly, you read my mind. So what happened that because you stand for so long, your blood flow goes down and you have a, like a little chambers that they are able to close in order to pump the blood back. After a while in the profession that you stand for so long, those gates are not able to properly close anymore. So that blood that came down will stay there and there where you start seeing all those vessels popping up in your in your back legs. Behind the uh, back knee, right? Behind the yeah, knee? Yeah, you can have in the I back of some of those. Yeah, you see? And not only like men, but also women, they do have, and it's very, very common. And you ended up having to have, especially women that they care more about this, the procedures, they go to the, to the doctors to, to get those things removed, sometimes burned, sometimes they just clean up with like some. You can't come back. Uh, yes, it does, you can come back. But in a way that we were saying always to prevent you can use some compression socks. That compression socks will help you a lot. And for example, if you work the entire day and at the end of the day your feet is just, oh my goodness, I can't stand, it's too painful. 
give yourself a try. Get a compression socks and try to try it out. Just see. You, we have different grades of compression, but anything that goes from 30 to 40 millimeters, it's already enough to improve your blood flow, uh, blood flow, flow from the lower extremities back up to the uh, big circulation. So anything higher than that is already to treat lymphedema. So lymphedema is treated with 40 to 60. And those socks are very, very tight. So try to go for something a little lower because you have to stand the entire day. And other than that, if you, if you already have a lymphedema, you have to have um, a special order in order to have those socks. Mm -hmm. But if you work in a barber and you have like a very painful feet at the end of the day, try it out. Uh, compression socks. Okay. You can get those compression socks at Walmart and CVS. They but then you use all day long. All day long, yes. What are the benefits using that besides what you just explained, uh, using those socks? The benefit is you're going to feel much less pain. Okay. Because a lot of people, they complain of, uh, let's say, you uh, you walk the entire day, right? Or uh, you go on the trip and at the end of the day you, you get your legs swollen. And it's like, oh my goodness, I can't stand on my feet. Mm -hmm. Because you have that, like that extra liquid that is collected down in your feet and you're just the, off the fact that you're putting your leg up and you start to feel the relief. Why? Because all that stagnant, all that uh, extracellular liquid is down there. You start like drainating everything back to your own body. So, and then when you have those socks, you're able to that that extra liquid won't be collected there because it's already tied up, it's wrapped up. Mm -hmm. And then when you get those things done during the day, at the beginning it's gonna be a little uncomfortable, but if you really have pain, it's a way of going and giving it a shot, at least a try, and you're gonna feel much better at the end of the day, that's for sure. What wow. else can you do to help besides the compression socks to improve your circulation in your legs? Well, when you stand, we can do like a uh, plantar flexion when you stay or we'll go on the tip of your toes and come back. That's a very good exercise because your gastric neum is your soleus or a muscle that works as a pump. So basically when you are able to contract those muscles, you're helping the blood to get back to the circulation as well. So if you have the opportunity, even marching in place is a good way of like it's, uh, enhancing the circulation. And also, if you're able to get like a little break and do some stretches where you go into a step, put your forefoot on the step and drop down your heel just to feel like that gentle stretch a little bit. Try to do 45 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds. Always Each remember muscle? to breathe. Yes, every, every, every cycle. Because you have to remember, we have some mechanisms in your muscle that if you do... Uh, by the by the book, uh, up to 30 seconds, your muscle up uh, at up to 17 seconds, your mu your body is saying, "Oh my God, this is like a painful stimuli. I'm not gonna allow this to happen because your own body is protecting for that." After 17 seconds, your body will understand that that's not a painful stimuli and will relax. But of course, this varies from person to person. That's one thing that uh, we have to be conscious about it, that when you're doing the stretch, these 17 seconds that might work for you, might not work for me, because I'm always tied up, I'm always trying, your muscle will be firing. The important part is when you learn how to listen to your body. So if you can feel it, and you keep like that tension and you try to relax. Of course, the stretch is not something pleasant because you're doing something that is uncomfortable. uncomfortable. But if you can feel it, your body, and you feel when the stretch kicks in, you're gonna feel like the lengthening. And when you feel that point, it's okay, now I'm really stretching. Okay. Because up to before that, you're just, your body's protecting. And after that, you start feeling the lengthening. That's where the job gets done. When someone starts stre stretching, they have to do stuff slowly, right? Otherwise, they can injure themselves uh, too, right? Exactly. Especially if you're a very, if you're a very tight person, your muscles are very short. You have to take like at the beginning, it's going to be very painful. But as as you do, 
you're gonna start feeling the improvement in the range of motion, the lengthening, and I even you're gonna feel much looser. That's the the key role there. I I believe in long term, fine uh, physiotherapist is uh, is a good investment, right? And people misconcept that is oh it's too expensive. I'm gonna do that. How much is gonna charge? They don't know how much you guys charge or anything. That is a big investment because your body is, is your motor, right? It's like, it's like a car motor. If you don't put oil right, if you don't treat it right. It, we end up breaking down on the side of the road. So is, is that too expensive? Uh, it depends, right? <laughs> well, it really depends like on the, the what you bring on it, what, what your therapist is bringing to the table to you, right? Yeah, always depends on experience, always depends on how you, what is the, his background, because it can, it really varies from therapist to therapist, but as you said, uh, there's, a couple things in life that we don't have price, right? Yes. And your own health, especially like I, I have like a very strong background from the hospital. And every time that I walk inside the hospital, I'm so blessed and I feel so relieved that I can walk on my feet, I can breathe on my own, and I can eat by myself. For sure. So, and then this is the thing that we have to bring awareness to people say this is your body this is you just have one you cannot buy another one so you better keep it in a way that it, for whatever time you have here it has to be a good quality i told you don't eat sugar anymore <laughs> <laughs> i'm the one eating sugar <laughs> i don't eat sugar a lot for so years I already <laughs> i think we have to treat our bodies right because it's it's what is put it food on the table it's what makes you keep going you know exactly. so healthy is it comes first so marcelo man thank you very much for coming out i have and more questions oh, yeah, are you already <laughs> finishing no <laughs> <laughs> if a beauty professional has let's say the herniated disc or scoliosis or whatever is this something um that would prevent them from working or there are ways that they can um, not feel pain or not make their condition worse. Of course, there are levels. I know some levels are like people need surgeries mm -hmm. and all this crazy stuff. But is this something that will prevent them from being a barber if they have any type of condition like that? Well, for example, uh, if you have a hernia the disc, right? And as I always says, I always say to my patients. Uh, if you have a herniated disc, or if you were diagnosed with one, congratulations, you just got a new kid. Why? Because you have to take care for the rest of your life. It's gonna be either you take care of it, or you have to go to surgery. And then what is the two approach that they have? Laminectomy, where you take a part of the disc, and in some way is the way just for a couple years that you're gonna feel relief, but at the end of the, r the road, you're going to have that back pain again, and you're going to end up having like a spinal fusion. And then the spinal fusion is much complicated because you have two rods where you fixate the vertebra from below and up in a way that you're going to lose function. So anything that you lose function in your body, is imagine like a potato bag, right? So if you do the surgery, you're gonna get that potato, you're gonna take like that potato in the bottom and just pull it out. So what happened with the entire bag? You have to readjust, readjust. right? And this readjusting process, sometimes is good, sometimes the surgery works well, but what if it doesn't go well? So this why we have, I'm like a, I like to push a lot to do exercises, to lose weight, instead of going for the surgery, because the surgery is the easiest way, right? But if you're able to understand your condition and you're able to see where you can improve, that's the real deal. That's the because best like remedy. as professionals, I can give you the path. I can show you, the, sorry, I can show you the path, but I cannot walk you alone. You have to go by yourself. I can guide you, but I cannot carry on my arms, you need to be able to walk on your own feet. And that's the challenge when you have a patient 
or a barber that has this dysfunction. You have to realize and understand your situation and how important and how crucial it is for you to be able to address this dysfunction that at the beginning seems to be nothing, but down the road, that thing can prevent you from work. Yes. And this is where the major events in the people's life start happening and they come to you and say like, hey, listen, I can't work. I can't even walk. I can't even walk. But when did this happen? Oh, no, uh, three years ago I had this, but it was nothing. It was nothing at that time, but look what happens to you right now. Yes. Our body is all connected. One thing led, led uh, uh, to another, right? So if it's in the early stage, there is way to prevent a bad outcome. As you said, lose weight, do therapy, do treatment, do exercises. So you wouldn't prevent someone from actual from actually working as a barber as long as it's treated early. Yes, I mean, like even in the late stages, our body has that amazing ability to adapt. So sometimes we face dysfunctions that are not dysfunction. Um, it's a dysfunction that is function functional for that type of patient. So it's not an end of the road, but you have to be able to understand that that adaptation comes from a dysfunction. And when you start treating the dysfunction, you don't want to treat whatever, whatever is adap he already adapted to it. Because sometimes you have pa uh, pa uh, patients with chronic pain for so long that their body already adapt. They already have that type of posture that they feel a little better. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they are at the end of the road. Just means that your therapist needs to know how to approach them. And that approach comes with experience, comes with like a proper diagnose and understanding your client, your patient's body in order for them to be functional at their baseline at work. I noticed a thing that most people that have, let's say, back or knee issues or something like that, most of them are overweight, Exactly. right? They're too heavy. They shouldn't be that heavy. And they try to find other excuses like, oh, no, I need surgery. Oh, I take this medication. They find excuses for not to lose weight. And do you agree that losing weight itself, it would solve most of half of the issues? <laughs> I wouldn't say that solve most of half, but I would say that will make life much easier. Let's say we use the potato bag example, right? So let's take the same bag of potato and put a lot of weight in front of the bag. What is going to happen? The bag will tumble forward, right? But we are not a bag of potato. We have to readjust. Instead of you falling forward, you ended up increasing your lower doses. So all the weight that you're carrying, that belly fat, throws you off balance. When I say like throws you off balance, it doesn't mean that you're going to fall, but your center of gravity is shifted forward and you start compensating and that's where the problems start to come. And if you're able to lose that, body, uh, that belly fat, you're going to be able to readjust and find your center of gravity. And all those muscles that were tight before, you're going to be able to strengthen them. And in a way that you're going to be function at the way that you're supposed to be working and the way that you're supposed to be balancing yourself. You don't have to deal with that much weight. Sometimes people say like, oh, I have like a little belly fat here, a little belly fat there. But remember, you're carrying that belly fat for the, the entire day. So yeah. your body's gonna get tired. Yes, your if you body's have to gonna stand feel up it. all day long. It's easier if you are less heavy, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. You have the less compensation. Less stress in your body if you're not heavy. Especially in your lower back. People that have like a big belly, they have a lot of lower back issues because they have like the weak abs. So they start like going with the, be the belly uh, protruded forward, and you see the lordosis uh, is like the the lower back arch, right, is start increasing because that weight is pushing everything forward. And then you start having like all the dysfunctions that we were saying before that is not function. But at this point, you still have time to adjust in a way that you're going to be able to get to your baseline and work as you're like, as your daily living without that much weight carrying. 
we're talking about body weight we, he, he affects we're talking about affect the physical thing but what about mentally he does affect people mentally too mentally and, and you know emotionally, uh, emotionally yes, you know yeah. psychologically you yeah know. we have to we have to be very careful when we touch uh, the, the weight subject. right because most of the people they are fat not because they want they really have like uh, hormone disorder maybe like a depression but that's where like I like to always say to my patients that we are professionals right I'm here to treat you but if I see that your problem sometimes is not coming from like a body dysfunction we have to be well aware and being able to refer that patient to like a psychologist or a psychiatrist not meaning that you're crazy or anything but it's a way of helping them in helping people helping the community making the difference in those people's lives because this is what makes a good professional not only you barbers too you're staying there you're talking to your clients you hear so many stories you, i'm sure you have some clients that even cry in your chairs because yeah. they are facing like every day and especially in america you have a lot of foreign people that are here they are having issues family issues they have like so many problems and we are the first guys that are like being that they can talk to it and you're able to address and you're able to assess those people and when you assess those kind of persons you have to be careful don't always say like hey go ahead and lose weight man so you have to it's a delicate uh, yeah. subject you know but of course losing weight is a very good way <laughs> of keeping yourself healthy it helps in all ways any other questions, my love? No. <laughs> she cut me off. Uh, I'm done with the questions. Guys, again, uh, this podcast is it's allow us to bring information, you know, knowledge, education, insights, bringing people like you to add value to our society, to our community, barbering community. And again, thank you very much for being here. Everything you spoke here he adds a lot of value to barbers and professional in our industry because i believe that most of us has scoliosis and bad portion and, and all those pains so thank you for coming out again guys this podcast is sponsored about invictus podcast students follow me on instagram tico invictus marcelo do you want to leave your uh, instagram page here so people can follow you and see what you do and who you are Sure, my Instagram is Marcelo underscore Lipiak. It's a little hard to find the Lipiak one, but it's L I P I E C. I'm going to tag you on my next stories. And you guys can follow me there. Um, you can reach me out, shoot me a text. I'll be able to, I will be happy to take your calls and hopefully we can make the difference. And in the beauty industry too. Because you guys are bringing so many content. I've been watching your podcasts, and I, I feel that you guys are doing, and I'm sure you're doing an amazing job, especially with all the kids that you guys are doing. Uh, I see all the graduations. Uh, I follow you guys, and I, I feel so proud. And I'm like, I saw them when they started and how they are doing right now. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, that's that's make my heart pumps harder just to see you doing it and the passion that you guys do and all the love and the effort that you're putting into this. And it's so amazing to see a couple successful like you guys. It's, it's very hard to find and you two are unique. You're bringing the best of the best for this community. Thank you, it's a bless to be a friend. I you know. appreciate it. Thank you, friend. thank you very much for coming out today. Thank you, man. <laughs>